Hey y'all, so um, I am going to do a video. This video is about wound treatment. So I'm all two way, um, I'm all preparation, you know, and being ready. I'm all about those things. And so with that being said, I know that it is necessary that people learn about wound treatment. Um, like for any who have seen prior videos of mine, you know, I go out into the woods, the mountains, different locations where you don't have um, access, easy access to um, medical treatment. Also, the different fields that I have worked in, I have seen where um, people may, life-threatening situations, if people knew what to do, they could preserve life until um, help gets there, or they can just preserve life. Um, so I wanna give you some information about wound treatment, um, because if you have a weapon and if there is a, a battle, or an injury, you need to, and you're hit, or your loved one is hit, or you're somewhere, and even if it's not a uh, gun, gun battle, a gun fight, um, if it's some other type of injury, a cut, um, a laceration, um, a break. Um, but especially right now, talking about wounds, you need to know how to treat those wounds. So I'm going to pull up this screen so we can discuss wound treatment um, under life-threatening scenarios. Just a second. All right, so wound treatment, how to treat wounds quickly in life-threatening situations. The first step, so I, I have done uh, a couple of videos I posted on Stop the Bleed. Um, you have, there is a series of three videos on Stop the Bleed, and it is direct information from the Stop the Bleed course. Um, so I would advise you to go and go through those tutorials um, so that you can get all of the information. Uh, currently, it's two videos posted. One more video has to post for that Stop the Bleed. Um, but I would encourage you to go through that tutorial um, of how to stop the bleed. It is necessary. All right. So briefly here, I'm just touching bases on it really briefly. Um, see the prior video. First, identify if bleeding is life-threatening. Find the source of the bleeding. So you're going to find the source. Scan the body, find the source of the bleeding. You're going to identify if it is life-threatening. Uh, is it blood spurting? Will, is, is it at, to the point where the blood won't stop? It's pooling on the ground. Clothing is soaked with blood. Loss of all or part of your arm or leg life-threatening. All of those equate life-threatening situations. So what are you going to do? You're going to compress. Apply, okay, if you have a tourniquet and um, you are not bleeding from your neck, your shoulder, or your growing area, you're going to use that tourniquet immediately. You're going to put the tourniquet above the side of the wound. You're going to tighten up, tight, 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 turn it out, tight, 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 um, click it, when the bleeding stops, that's good. If it has not stopped, you're going to keep turning, make it tighter, or apply another tourniquet. Um, write the time on that. So you're stopping the bleed. That's the number one point. If you don't have a tourniquet, right, you can make use a makeshift tourniquet. There'll be another video on that. Also, I do have a video um, that I'm posting on how to use the visual of how to use a tourniquet. Um, but if you don't have a way to do a makeshift tourniquet, you don't have a um, tourniquet available, you're going to apply direct pressure on the wound with a clean, dry cloth, okay? That's not working. You're going to pack the wound with clean, dry cloth. You're going to keep packing that wound and then apply pressure. Uh, you can pack that wound with gauzes, clean cloth, and then you're going to apply pressure. Main point, stop the bleeding first. All right, let's move on. 
there are videos about this in detail. I suggest you learn it, not just from me. Go and, and do your own research because you are your own first responder. All right. Now, in a dangerous situation, you want to stop the bleed, right? You want to scan and see where the injury is. But all of these things may need to be done simultaneously if there is um, an imminent threat, correct? So your first task will be to eliminate the imminent threat if you have the ability to do it. You're going to move to cover and concealment if you can. All right, that's a lot of instructions. Pal, your arm has been, say, shot, right? You're going to eliminate that threat, okay? If you cannot eliminate, and there are multiple threats, if there is an ability for you to move to cover and concealment, that's what you're going to do. While on the way to moving to conceal, cover and concealment, if you can start applying that tourniquet while you're moving, do so. You want to stop the bleeding as quick as possible. Do you all understand those instructions? All right, let me repeat it again. Pow, shot. Okay, threat is there. Pow, eliminate the threat if you can. If you can, if you cannot, if you can eliminate, if you cannot, you're, you're wanting to move to cover and concealment after you have eliminated the threat or if the threat is still there, you can't eliminate it, move to cover and concealment at the same time while you are attempting to stop the bleed, apply pressure, whether that be applying that tourniquet while moving to, tur to cover, uh, whether that be making a makeshift tourniquet while moving to cover. These are simultaneous things. So you should practice um, in your time of training. You should be training uh, with injuries being in mind as well. Most people train and they don't train from a standpoint of, I might get injured. You need to train from a standpoint of if you get injured, because it's highly likely that you will get injured. All right. So I just want this to be as clear as possible while you're moving to cover. Stop uh, attempt to stop that bleeding as much as possible. Apply direct pressure if you don't have a tourniquet on the side of the wound while moving to cover. Um, Number three, move to cover and concealment. This space should be clear of immediate threat and give you the ability to treat the wound. This space will likely still be in a threat zone, okay? So say there are multiple threats. You were able to eliminate the immediate threat and move to better cover. There still may be threats in your area, in the region. So you're going to move and you're going to move to a place that is that is as clear as possible of immediate threat so that you can tend to your wound so that if you have to move again or engage again, you will be ready. So move to cover and concealment. This space should be clear of immediate threat and give you the ability to treat the wound. This space will likely still be a threat zone if there are multiple threats. So you will need to be ready to eliminate a threat even while treating your wound. So you should still be scanning the environment while you're treating your wound. These are things you need to train for. Right here, I'm going to plug North Florida Tactical. This is somebody that he will run these drills with you. Um, so that's good. You can also go. I would advise you to go with him. I'd advise you to run the drills yourself. Continue. I'd advise you to even make contact and run the drills with me as because you need people as creative as possible to be able to engage. But uh, North Florida Tactical, I'm plugging him because he runs these active drills and it's exciting to me. Again, um, so you will need to be ready to eliminate a threat even while treating the wound. Remember to be vigilant and visually scan the area continuously while tending to your wound. Um, be ready to treat wound in stages if necessary. So understand that um, th there are multiple dynamics to the treatment of your wound, to the preservation of your life. The first dynamic is stopping the bleed. So, pal, I'm eliminating threat or I'm moving to cover and concealment because my first goal is to, to reduce and stop the bleeding. All right. So that's stage one. I need to stop the bleeding. In stage one, I need to eliminate Im Im imminent threats or immediate threats. I need to move to cover and concealment all simultaneously while I need to stop the bleed. All of that is in stage one. And so you need to prioritize and get that done if an injury happens. All right. So let's see where are we at. Um, that's the first stage. Um, listen, 
be ready to treat wound in stages if necessary. First stage, stop the bleeding, and inclusive of all of that, those things I just said, or you will bleed out and become confused, disoriented, and go into shock, pass out, die. All of those are options. Once bleeding has been stopped and if area is safe, continue with your wound care. If the bleeding has stopped and the area has is not safe, then what do you need to do? Move to better concealment or re-engage and eliminate threats. If you are still alive at this point, after all of those stages, the most high may be on your side <laughs> and you may have done something right. All right. You may be in the clear zone of safety, but you are not out of the clear yet. Bleeding has stopped. Number one, bleeding has stopped or you would not be here. Now you must flush the wound. Make sure your hands are clean as possible or use surgical gloves. You should have these in your EDC, your everyday carry. I understand you have your everyday carry, your everyday carry sidearm. You should have your everyday carry survival first aid kit. All right. Um, so in that everyday carry, you should have surgical gloves. Um, examine the wound area. Are there objects, shrapnel that can safely be removed without puncturing main arteries or causing life-threatening bleeding? If objects are present and can be safely removed without causing more damage, remove them. Again, making sure that they are not going to puncture a main artery, and making sure that it is safe to remove without causing more bleeding or more damage. If so, then safely remove them. You do this at your own risk. This is in a situation where 911 may not be able to respond. Emergency help can't get to you. You may be half dead anyway. So these are survival tips. Use them at your own risk. Do your own research, your own study, all right? Um, but if there is shrapnel, if there, if you've been impaled with something, if it is not um, near a main artery and removing this thing will not cause more damage, remove it. Um, use knowledge. Flush the wound. This may be done with water, saline solution, which is just a mixture of water and salt, um, peroxide, betadine, alcohol, um, or any designated antiseptic for the intent of wound wound cleaning should be in your EDC. So again, in your everyday carry survival first aid kit, you should have, I say the tourniquet, you should have those thorough gloves. I have a video on what I keep in mind, so you can check that video out as well. Um, and you should have some form of antiseptics to be able to clean and treat your wounds. Um, Next, you're going to use an anti antibiotic ointment and bandage the wound. So that means you need to have some bandages in your EDC first aid survival kit. And it means that you're going to have to have um, some antibiotic ointment as well so that you can cover and, um, and have that wound bandaged up correctly. Now, if you're still alive at this point, thank the most high. But do not stop there. <laughs> you want to prevent any possible infection that your body has been exposed to. So now is the time that you access your antibiotic, the amoxicillin, penicillin, any of those cillins, to rid the body of infection exposure. Should you, I'm sorry, and that should be in your, your survival EDC, your survival everyday carry, first day survival everyday carry. So let's recover. You, you let's re um, let's talk about it again. And um, in your everyday carry survival, you should have what? You should have your tourniquet. You should have your uh, gloves, sterile gloves. You should have some form of antiseptic. You should have some bandages, gauzes also for stopping the bleed, um, and you should have some type of antibiotic ointment, and uh, you should have some type of antibiotic. All right. If you do not have access to an antibiotic, research these natural remedies and learn how to use them for wound treatment prior to you needing them, and then keep some in your everyday carry survival first aid. 
All right, so some of these, but you do your own research. Honey, honey has been used as an ointment that helps wounds to heal and prevents or draws out infection. Um, there was a study done in 2016 that demonstrates that honey dressings can help to heal wounds. Now that, again, use at your own risk, do your own research. Um, it, it is supposed to heal antibacterial. Um, and the effects of honey are attributed to the hydrogen peroxide that it contains. Isn't that cool to know? I did not know that honey, until I did the research, honey contains hydrogen peroxide properties. All right, so ginger as well, natural an antibiotic that fights many strands of bacteria. Echinacea, used by aboriginals, our people, to treat infections and wounds, kills many different kinds of bacteria, including streptococcus, pyogenes. Some of these words I may not pronounce correctly, but as long as you know and you do the research, make it do, do what it needs to be done. <laughs> do your own research on teas and herbs um, that have an antibacterial property. Um, obviously, the antibiotic prescribed from your physician would be the best case scenario. If you are in an emergency situation, hopefully you have some of that on hand. Uh, because you're going to need the most potent um, antibiotic as possible. Again, your life may depend on it, so make sure you prepare for that. Now, if you stop the bleeding uh, but fail to treat the wound properly, death may still occur due to septic shock. Now, this is a potentially fatal medical condition that occurs when sepsis, which is one, organ injury, Damage to, damage in response to infection that leads to dangerously low blood pressure and abnormalities in cellular metabolism associated with a greater risk of mortality death. The primary infection is commonly caused by bacteria. It can cause multiple organ failure and death. All right. So if you fail to clean your wound, you can go into septic shock, which will can equate, equate to death. Number two, infection. I'm going to give you some signs of infection. The signs of infection are fever, feeling of overall malaise or sick, is feeling bad all over. Uh, green tan or a pungent drainage liquid oozing like the bottom one, pus coming out of the wound, increased pain in wound, redness around the wound, swelling of wounded area, smelly wound, um, warmer skin surrounding wound, loss of function and movement. All right, so at that point, if you have an infection in your wound, then <clears throat> that is a problem. So you're going to need uh, further treatment and um, that antibiotic that we talked about. But if you take the necessary steps and procedures that I've spoken of, you may be able to prevent, prevent infection. And that is pretty much all that I have to offer today. Like, comment, um, share, subscribe, <laughs> and let's be ready. Let's be prepared. Peace.